Madam Secretary, uh, thank you so much. On behalf of all your friends and admirers in the room in Abu Dhabi, it's once again my great honor to be with you today. I'll be brief because I know uh, after we start, our, our guests have questions for you as well. But I think at the top, uh, it's important to, uh, to touch base with you on what separates us today and what we're all so worried about. Uh, we're now 13 days into the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. And as we cover the story and look for solutions, the words world war keep coming up. Uh, it's hard to ignore. You know Vladimir Putin. How do you think this will end? Oh, Mika, <clears throat> it's so heartbreaking to me that Putin is acting out uh, his own insecurities, his own resentments and grievances uh, against the people of Ukraine, uh, waging a war against a smaller state that is totally unprovoked, as we have seen, uh, really tells us everything we need to know about Putin. Uh, and I'm delighted uh, and relieved that up until now, the world has really stood with Ukraine. Uh, the imposition of sanctions, the provision of assistance to the Ukrainian people, both to defend themselves, but also to receive humanitarian aid uh, in the face of these vicious and brutal onslaughts by the Russian military. I don't know how it ends, but I think that uh, probably the person who is most surprised that it is still going on is Vladimir Putin. Uh, the level yeah. of um, defense and determination uh, that the Ukrainian people are showing, starting uh, with their president, President Zelensky, going all the way down to, you know, grandmothers and young women taking up uh, arms for the first time to defend their families and their communities uh, is tragic but inspiring. And I hope that the world will stay with Ukraine uh, while they try to protect uh, their homeland and all that they hold dear, including freedom and democracy. Uh, mm. So there's, there's no real way that we can predict now, Mika, as you know so well, you're such a, uh, an observer of all of this, but it's important for the world to stand with Ukraine. And the final thing I would say is sometimes in the past, uh, now nearly two weeks, Americans have said, well, why should we care? Or how does it affect me? And I think if you care about freedom, if you care about democracy, if you care about uh, the rights of uh, individuals, uh, if you care about our future, uh, even though it's a war that is happening uh, far away, it is a war that will affect um, what kind of world we're going to live in. And that's why I hope everybody uh, understands why we should uh, be uh, supporting uh, the Ukrainian people going forward. Um, you mentioned uh, Ukrainian women. Uh, we've seen them providing medical care, carrying babies to safety, bearing arms, and fighting alongside men, facing brutality, facing death. What do you think is driving this immeasurable resilience? Well, I think it is several things. I think, first of all, it is shock. Um, you know, two weeks ago, these people, especially these women, uh, they were taking care of their babies. They were uh, planning their weddings. They were going to work. They were continuing their education. And, and because a leader of a much larger country on their border decided that he wanted to stamp out their way of life, they are now fleeing for safety or standing up against uh, that uh, military force. And I think if you're fighting not for an ideology, not for a dictator, but you're fighting for your family and your home, you're fighting for your community, you're fighting for what you have grown up in, and you're fighting for your freedom, uh, that to me is so inspiring. And it's something the world needs to understand that when you are under such enormous danger, of course, you're going to wonder what can you possibly 
do in the face of tanks and aircraft and advanced weaponry. But what the Ukrainians, both their military and their people are showing is that you can take a stand. You can take a stand for what you believe in and for your values. And you can, at least as of now, you know, stop this evil force from just wiping you out and ending the way that you had thought about what life would be for you and future generations. So it's resilience born out of danger and pain, but it's also rooted in universal human values about what people deserve to have rather than being forced uh, to live by someone else's uh, you know, dictate as Putin wants them to. Just one more on this. You want the world to not turn away. Um, will there be the strategic cooperation and organization to get the Ukrainians what they need to take on this fight? Well, a lot of it is going on now. I know that um, uh, lethal defensive weapons um, are making their way into Ukraine. They need more. I want to see them get more. I've urged uh, publicly and privately that they get more. Uh, we also um, are hoping that uh, the Russians will agree to humanitarian corridors. Uh, so far, they have not. Um, and what they've offered is unacceptable because they frankly are corridors into Russia, uh, which is not where Ukrainians uh, think is uh, mm. safe for them. Uh, and there is a, a concerted effort by governments, particularly uh, NATO governments, uh, both to provide weapons and aid. And there is a very uh, large and growing uh, charitable philanthropic effort also to provide uh, humanitarian aid. The final thing I would say, Mika, is I hope that people don't get tired uh, of supporting uh, the brave uh, Ukrainians who are standing up for uh, themselves, freedom, democracy, their rights, because this is not going to end quickly. Because the Ukrainians have taken a stand, it's going to drag on and it's going to be incredibly brutal on the part of the Russians. And therefore, I hope people will continue to pay attention to the news coverage, mm -hmm. understand that the Ukrainians are really and I would argue fighting for all of us, uh, fighting for values that we hold dear and not get discouraged and not turn away.